So we've been working all week to compile just some of the most egregious examples of misinformation that have been spread during this war. Let's go ahead and start where we should with CNN um, that went on one of these, you know, pre-approved IDF ride-alongs. This was in advance of building the case for uh, raiding the Al-Shifa hospital. This is at a different hospital where they're trying to show how this was being used by Hamas militants to hold hostages, et cetera. There was one part in particular that caught people's attention. Let's take a look at what CNN had to say. This is a garden list. Every terrorist has his own shift. In this room, he says, a guard list that begins October 7th ends November 3rd, not long before the hospital was evacuated. So a, a guard list. And, mm. you know, they alleged this was a list of the people who were there checking in to uh, record that they were watching the hostages during this time. Except, put this up on the screen, people who actually speak and read Arabic uh, revealed that this quote-unquote evidence that it says of Hamas using Rantisi Hospital for military purposes, including an alleged list of operative shift holding hostages, is actually just a calendar of days in the week mm -hmm. in Arabic. So, that was a bit pretty, of an obvious one Pretty there, uh, big mistake. This is, I just don't understand how they can just immediately post this stuff. And one of the things is with the idea, I mean, everybody always, you know, no, many people may not realize this, 20% of Israel is Arab. They speak Arabic. If you've ever been to Jerusalem, when I was in Jerusalem, I don't speak a damn word of Hebrew. I ordered my food in Arabic because many of the people there speak both languages. So presumably, and one of the things the IDF says all the time, is they have people embedded with them who do speak Arabic, including Arab Israeli soldiers who are in the IDF. So this is one of those where how do you put this out to the world? That's number one. But two is CNN. You think people from CNN don't have speak Arabic? So nobody at CNN. Nobody in all of CNN. Yeah. They couldn't just do a quick check on this one before you put it on yeah. air. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Right. And I mean, we, we have though. higher editorial standards than that. For, for real. Example. For, really, really. We really do. Yes. Yeah. We make sure because there is so much of this stuff right. floating, floating around. around. We make sure we check it as best we can, possibly can before we put anything on air. And so remember the context here of these ride-alongs too um, that we talked about before. You know, this is the IDF brings you along. You have to vet your footage with them of everything before you put it out to the public. So it's very constrained. It's a very cramped view. Um, only certain journalists, quote unquote, get to go along on these things. So you would think in that context of knowing that you're basically being used for war propaganda, that you would be extra careful about what you brought to air. But nope, nope. not so much. Yes. Um, got another one for you. This was a video that was making the rounds that purportedly showed a nurse inside of Al-Shifa, making some extraordinary claims. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, Allah, I can't believe I'm doing this, but the world has to know, has to know what Hamas is making here. They're taking over the entire hospital. They're taking over the fuel, the medicine. I have nothing to treat with. So she's saying that, you know, Hamas, they're stealing the, the medicine. She's very afraid. Well, it comes out that people at the hospital say they've never seen this lady before. They have no idea who she is, and she yes. doesn't work there, soccer. Yeah, that's a bit of a little bit of a problem. Although, as you pointed out, and this is a great example, put this one up there on the screen. Then people who were trying to dox her were saying, look, this is so-and-so, the Israeli TV actress and digital content creator. That's actually not her. Uh, and so there's like these, there are constant information wars that are online where they're doxing someone who they claim to have been the actress. It's actually not the actress, if it was even an actress. And then you have the person there who says, oh, well, everybody, nobody in the hospital has even seen this person before. Same thing with the CNN report. You have multiple layers of editorial screw-ups where they broadcast something which is obviously false to anybody who speaks Arabic. And I think people just should appreciate how difficult it is. And, and you know, it does vindicate a lot of what we do here, where, you know, the amount of time that we spend, I mean, like, okay, is this 100%? Is it even 80%? 80% is not high enough whenever you're uh, reporting something that is uh, straight up false or not. And uh, you have, you know, extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. And that's the biggest problem, I think, that we have seen in so much of this that keeps happening. Here's another example. Let's put this one up there on the screen. You can see here, uh, there is a photo which was going viral, which showed a woman in a bombed out 
house that was on a staircase. And it says, wading through the rubble to get all that is left to remind her of her child. Hashtag Gaza Holocaust. And as a person who points out, what a tragedy, except that is a photo from Homs in Syria that was bombed by the Assad regime. And I, that is not even the first time Crystal, that I have seen uh, mistaken photos from the Syrian tragedy, especially because people look so similar, that have then been used in terms of Gaza. So people have got to remember that everything that you're seeing is meant to influence you in some way. That's one of the things we highlighted from day one. If something's in English, it's to target you. If it's in Arabic, it's to speak to the people who speak Arabic. If it's in Hebrew, it's to the people who speak Hebrew. And there are overlapping sometimes interests in that, but there are also wildly diverging ones. And we are all finding that out in real time. I thought Ukraine was bad, but this may actually be. This is I, worse. I think it's probably I don't think there's worse. any doubt that it's yeah. worse because in Ukraine, you at least have some journalists able yes, to operate. good point. Yeah. The only, I mean, the number of journal, I think it's 48 journalists who've been killed in Gaza. So the number of journalists you even have remaining in the Gaza Strip is very limited. Mm -hmm. And the only international journalists who were allowed in are like on the IDF ride along, you know, showing whatever it is that the Israeli military from a propaganda perspective wants to put out. So that's why it's incredibly, incredibly uh, difficult and why mm -hmm. there is so, so much lies and so much propaganda. To your point about the English language thing, you know, it was very noteworthy. Part of Israel's PR campaign around their um, storming of uh, Shifa Hospital was that they, oh, we brought medical supplies and we brought baby food. And they took this picture of these boxes in giant English letters stamped medical supplies as part of this effort. Now, doctors on the ground um, told some people that mm -hmm. they didn't actually get any of those medical supplies. I don't know if it's true or not. So I'm going to say I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, you can see the way that these things are also staged to try to impact an international audience, uh, i.e. us. Um, this is, let me put this last one that we have for you up on the screen. This is just a sampling. There were many examples we should have shown you. Yeah, this is but a crazy one. This is Netanyahu's spokesperson. So this is not some rando on Twitter. But he says, the Palestinians are fooling the international media and public opinion. Don't fall for it. See for yourselves how they fake injuries and evacuate quote unquote injuries civilians all in front of the cameras, Pallywood gets busted again. Pallywood refers to this ongoing conspiracy that actually the horrific shots that you're seeing of Palestinians who are being killed and maimed and pilled out of the rubble, et cetera, are not actually real, that these are crisis actors, et cetera. That video that he shows there that he purports to reveal the truth about Pallywood it's the backstage of a short film called The Reality, was shot in Lebanon by Lebanese actors in support of the population of Gaza back in 2022, and it's already, in previous conflicts, been used for misinformation as well. But this was, yes, this was actors. Nobody has been using this to claim these are images of Palestinians, and there's other examples of this so-called Pallywood um, theory, which is, you know, an attempt to minimize the civilian death on the ground and pretend like it's not really happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this Pallywood thing is just totally ridiculous. And there are many examples which we couldn't necessarily confirm 100%, but that one is the best example because it's literally a film that was then repurposed and that was put out there. And this is where I just want to say caution, caution, caution. We've seen video game footage that's been passed off. We've seen now, yeah. you know, the Syrian uh, uh, thing. We, I've even seen images from Afghanistan that have somehow have, and it's very clear when you look at it, you're like, hey, you know that's Afghanistan, right? That's not what uh, uh, Gaza looks like. So many falsehoods, things that are put out there, we have to check. It's a responsibility to put every single thing that they put out there as to whether it's real or not. And then also to caveat properly, because that was actually my biggest problem with the CNN report, is anytime you and I put up something from the IDF, we're like, this is from the IDF. Right. We don't know if it's true. This is what they say. You have to caveat and show things properly. It's completely fine to play government information as long as you contextualize it properly. But you can't say that we've independently verified something or imply that and put it on your air. That's where it, I think becomes most uh, irresponsible. And this is also the danger of uh, Twitter and citizen journalism and all that. I'm pro-citizen journalism. I am against censorship. I don't think any of these people should be censored or any of that. I just, though, because I weighed in this ecosystem, and I guess have for a while, ever since the beginning of ISIS, is I'm just used to the idea of like, yeah, it could be totally false. And yeah. you gotta wait a little while. You never know whether something is real or not. Yeah, well, yeah. we're in the midst of finding out if the uh, Al-Shifa command node, mm -hmm. Dr. Evil layer underneath was also misinformation. So 
we'll see. Find out. We'll see, and we'll vet that evidence as best yes, we can. Yes, exactly. Well. It will be properly vetted. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber-funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.